Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a Plunder Patrol guide right here. Uh, these are kind of the main ratios that I play the deck out. De deck out um, is honestly up to your own preference, but um, I'll be going over each card with um, and we'll go over the deck profile in a second with some test hands later. So um, right here we have all the most of the Plunder Patrol cards that you do play in a Plunder Patrol deck. Um, so starting off, this is arguably the best Plunder Patrol, Whitebeard. Um, well, um, first I'll just say that I like to classify the monsters into two portions. First we have our main deck monsters, I call them the captains, and then for extra deck monsters we, I call them the ships. Uh, technically, one of the extra deck monsters is also kind of a ca captain, they, he has the same function, but um, we'll get to him later. So, um, two of our um, captains right here, they have the effect to summon one of our ships from the extra deck and then the other ones just extend. So right here we have Whitebeard, uh, what it says, on your opponent's turn, um, you can summon a Plunder Patrol from your extra deck by, um, with the same attribute as a mo monster your opponent controls or is in their graveyard. So, um, he comes up pretty often. Um, for sometimes you don't really use his first effect that much. Uh, probably his best effect is his second effect, where if it's sent from your hand or monster zone to the graveyard, you can summon a Plunder Patrol straight from your deck. So, um, both Whitebeard and Redbeard, this is the second one, both of them have the same first effect to tag out into one of your ships with the same attribute as Monster Your Opponent Controls. Um, and then its second effect is if it's sent from the hand or monster zone to the graveyard, you can go ahead and um, equip itself to another Plunder Patrol you control. So um, if you, a note, pattern you might notice is that both of them like kind of are based around equipping stuff. Um, so that comes up pretty often. and. Yep, those are the two ones. For these two first came out in Ignition Assault, and back then the only Plunder Patrol cards I believe were like these two, and then maybe like a trap and this um, field spell shipyard, and then I think we only had the Synchro Xyz and the Link um, back then. It, it was not that great, but now with the new support that they've gotten in Eternity Code, it's a lot better. One of the new cards they got is Bluebeard. Um, it says if you control a Plunder Patrol, you can summon it from your hand. So it's basically a free extender. Uh, three copies of Golden Hair. This is another one of the best Plunder Patrols, where um, if it's in your hand, you can send another Plunder Patrol monster from your hand to the graveyard to summon it. So, oh yes, I forgot to talk about Bluebeard's uh, second effect. Uh, what does when sent from the hand or field to the graveyard? You can discard one, draw one. Uh, discarding one can trigger the effects of cards like Redbeard and Whitebeard. So that does come up. And um, in terms of Golden Hair, what it says, if it's in your hand, you can send another Plunder Patrol from your hand to the graveyard in order to summon it. So it can trigger cards like Whitebeard and Bluebeard. And if it's in the graveyard, you can discard any card, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a Plunder Patrol, in order to summon it back out. So, um, it can trigger dangers and stuff, so some builds do like to play Danger Mothman, I don't, I'll get to the deck profile in a minute. Um, but, um, both Whitebeard and Golden Hair lock you into your Plunder Patrols, so it's not that easy to, um, splash it into other strategies. Um, for our... Extra deck monsters, I just like to uh, go over these before going over spells and traps. Uh, we have two copies of our fusion uh, monster, Plunder Patrol ship list. Um, you can summon it with the effect of your white beard or red beard, uh, which can just tag out into a list. And you can also fusion summon it using the um, deck's fusion spell, Plunder Patrol ship shape shipping. Um, I, Plunder Patrol ship shape ship shipping. Uh, just say that three times fast, it's just very difficult. Um, but what Plunder Patrol list does, it's a monster negate, which is very nice. And during the main phase, you can also summon any Plunder Patrol that are equipped to him. So if he's going to die to like something like a lightning storm, say, um, you can just change the effect to summon any Plunder Patrols that are equipped to it, which does come up. And um, why does it's a monster negate? Where if your opponent activates a monster, you can discard a Plunder Patrol card, negate it. And if it's equipped with a Plunder Patrol card, you can then add another Plunder Patrol card from your deck to your hand. So, um, so, most of the um, extra deck monsters do have the effect where they have some sort of disruption, in this case it's a monster negate, by discarding a plunder patrol card, and then you can add another plunder patrol card from your deck to the hand. So, uh, not only does it disrupt your opponent, it also generates advantage, which is one of the main um, selling points of this deck. 
Um, and next we have our Synchro Monster, Thunder Patrol Ship Brawn. Uh, we have two tuners, uh, White Beard and Golden Hair. What he does is on a quick effect, instead of um, negating a monster effect, it can banish a spell or trap. Uh, but you um, can only search Plunder Patrol monsters from your deck to your hand, not just any card. So you can only search one of these. Um, and that's really not good. Um, it's It has another effect where it gains 500 attack for each... Um, all other fiends you control gain 500 attack, sorry. And its effect to banish spell trap is only a quick effect if you, um, if there's a plunder patrol equipped to it. So, uh, most of the time there will be a plunder patrol equipped to it. If you have something like an ash blossom in your graveyard, you can summon it during your own turn using cards like emblem, but we'll get to that later. Um, just a very solid deck against some matchups. Uh, match these matchups include something like, I don't know, Alter Geist or, you know, something on those lines. Um, we have two copies of plunder patrol ship Mork. It's an Xyz monster, uh, just similar to Brawn, what it says, you can discard a Plunder Patrol and then you could banish or an effect monster your opponent controls and then you can add a Plunder Patrol spell or trap. Um, what this does, uh, it adds a Plunder Patrol any card, um, Brawn searches monster and he searches a spell or trap. And spell or traps, the spells and traps are very good, uh, we'll get to them later. And um, what it does, it's a quick effect if it's equipped to the if, if if it's equipped with a plunder patrol, similar to brawn, and um, if it if you hard summon it, which you don't do too often in this deck, uh, sometimes you do, but not too often. But if you hard summon it, if a plunder patrol card would be destroyed, you can just um, detach one material from it instead. So it's kind of like a dingirsu. Um, finally, this is probably the best um, extra deck monster, Blackbeard. Uh, what it does. It's not a ship, but it's technically an, a captain in the extra deck, where it has a, an effect similar to your white beard and red beard, where it can uh, tag itself out for one of your extra deck monsters, and on top of that, you get a draw. Um, it doesn't necessarily tag itself out; you can tag out any of your um, monsters on the field. So you can tag out blue beard and golden hair too, and then you get a draw card on top of that. So um, he he's just very good, and those draws can turn into discards for the for the um, ships you summon. So it can act as a discard for Morg, Brawn, or Lys. So um, th those are some of the monsters. If you notice any pattern, um, these two are based around just summoning your extra deck monsters. These two are based around extending. And um, these two also help in sending cards from your hand to the graveyard. So it will trigger the floating effects of your um, other cards. And then in the extra deck, all of them are built around just disrupting your opponent and then searching a um, searching a card as a follow-up so it's kind of similar to orcus in a way where it just is based around out resourcing your opponent to death so um and blackbeard is just kind of a draw free draw so uh, for spells and traps we run two of the fusion spell we only run two because we also run foolish burial goods because its graveyard effect is super good um but this is the fusion spell uh, practically just fuses and in the graveyard it banishes itself to equip discard emblem of Plunder Patrol to one of your monsters. You can also equip a Plunder Patrol monster, which does come up sometimes. A Plunder Patrol monster from your deck, which comes up sometimes if you're summoning it off list. Um, but usually you will be equipping Emblem P Plunder Patrol. What it does, um, it, g it gains the equipped monster gains 500 and it can be targeted with card effects, so that's some degree of um, protection. And what you what you can do, you can send the equipped card to the graveyard in order to tag out your plunder patrol into an extra deck monster. But it doesn't have to be a monster your opponent controls. It can be a monster on your field or graveyard. So if you have something like an ash in your graveyard, you can just tag it out into brawn, which is very very nice. Um, that's its main use. I um, and it also gives the equipped monster 500 attack, which doesn't come up too often, but this deck can also just put a super beefy beat sticks. A um, Memnum Plunder Patrol, a 3 off for sure. Um, and the field spell, this field spell is super good. Um, what does all your Plunder Patrols gain 500 attack for each Plunder Patrol in your spell trap zone? So um, if you have a bunch of equips, if you have like 3 cards in your spell trap zone, all of your monsters gain 1500 attack, and if you have brawn on field which gives everything a passive 500, you instantly have plus 2000 attack just like that. Um, the attack gain does come up sometimes in ODKs, but its second, um, its other effects are really what shines. Um, its first its first effect is um, you can discard a card and then search a plunder patrol. That discard can um, trigger dangers. There's a danger variant of this deck, I won't go over that today though. 
Um, and what it does is search is any plunder patrol. So if you search, discard something like a blue beard, you can search a plunder patrol, and then you can use a um, blue. Uh, just a very very good card. Just free searches. Um, three copies of plunder patrol booty. This is the only trap you run, and basically it can change the attribute of monsters your opponent controls. So it can trigger cards like your white beard, red beard, emblem, and black beard, uh, just to tag out into a um monster of choice so if your opponent has something like say a multi faker on their field you can change it into a fire using your plunder patrol booty and then you can uh, tag out one of your plunder patrols for a copy of brawn and then banish anything they have uh, just a very very potent card on top of that it also monster reborns on top of that so um once you declare the attribute you can um, summon it and then you can do that every single turn which is very powerful so um just a quick 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 recap of the deck um their monsters are based around summoning their extra deck monsters which um all are based around disrupting your opponent while generating advantage on top of that and their uh, spells or traps are just to help your monsters to achieve that um goal um that's kind of a quick summary if you want but we'll go on to the deck profile now right here i have my deck um, some of the cards that you use as assistance are Genix Undyne. The main reason we run this is just to send your golden hair to the graveyard from your deck. And um, it also searches your Genix controller. It sends to the graveyard as cost, so your opponent cannot Ash Blossom it, which is um, my favorite thing about Genix Undyne. Some people like to run Mathematician instead, but sometimes if you just use Mathematician, your plays just end at normal summon Mathematician Ash just stop if you don't have a good enough hand um so we run genix undying unfortunately you do have to run the one garnet of genix controller but i get, think it's worth it we run white stingray the main reason for this is because it is a uh, free extender so you can discard something like um a white beard to summon it and then white beard summon something or um it's also acts as another level 40 go into bahamut shark because the entire archetype is a water archetype um, I should probably run Ash Blossom here just to go into Brawn, but I guess with the ability to do go into cards like Genix Control because I feel that Morg is a bit better than Brawn. Um, we run three copies of Desires. Uh, I max out in Desires because this deck needs maximum consistency. Two copies of Foolish Burial Goods to send your Plunder Patrol ship shape shipping to the graveyard. Not only does running two ensure that you have an extra card copy in your deck, it's not a bad card to draw either, so uh, we run two of it. One copy of terraforming to get to your little thing here. Two copies of salvage. All of our water monsters are 1500 attack or lower. So it can just add two from your graveyard to your hand. Sh same card advantage as pot of greed. Uh, just absolutely incredible. Three copies of call by grave for our hand traps. And th that's kind of the main stuff we play. For extra deck, we run one copy of um, Adamant's Beta Risen Dragtide. Um, it can just act as another spell or trap negate just because and we can always have a water monster in the graveyard because we do run um, in our entire deck is water. One copy of a white or a whale. This um, when single summon it can blow up your all monsters all of your opponent's attack position monsters. So that that's very nice. So on top of that it can attack twice and it deals piercing. Um, I believe it. So this is just a very very good card. On top of that, if it's sent to the graveyard by opponent's card, you can banish another water to revive it, which is absolutely ins insane. Uh, this does come up pretty often in terms of OTKs. One copy of Bahamut Shark, just because um, most of our monsters are level four waters, so we can go into totally awesome. One copy of Abyss Dweller, uh, it can it can make the deck gain 500 attack, just so that um. It can make stuff gain attack, 500 attack on top of blocking your opponent's graveyard. That does come up sometimes. And one copy of Al Mirage. Um, this kind of makes your golden hair a one card blackbeard, which is kind of our deck's main goal to go into a white blackbeard on turn one. Um, and you can just link it into an Al Mirage, discard one, summon it back out, and then you can go into blackbeard. Um, so the main cards that we've added are uh, similar for consistency, recursion, uh, extending, just making sure, well I guess Genix and that is an extender because you can just get golden hair for free. Um, it's all basically based around going into your captains, like your main one is Blackbeard because it doesn't rely on you hard drawing it. Uh, so Blackbeard is probably one of the most important cards in this entire deck. 
Uh, so just the ability to disrupt your opponent on their turn is very, very powerful. The deck is kind of difficult to pilot. I'm not the best uh, pilot myself, but I do. But as long as you have a rough understanding of what, what the deck does, you should be pretty good off. So now let's go into some test hands. So if, um, so right here we have test hand number one. Um, let's see. We've drawn the Genix control controller, unfortunately, but we can do some things. We can start off with the shipyard. And we're going to use the shipyard to get rid of the blue beard or the white beard. Doesn't really matter that much. We'll get rid of the white beard to get an extra search. Uh, we'll get the search for a copy of golden hair. Um, well, now white beard will go ahead and trigger summoning a copy of red beard. I'd say is probably the best one, unfortunately. Um, now we can go ahead activate our little blue beard over here summon itself out and then we can just do some draws and stuff uh, we can go into this we can go ahead and normal summon golden hair and then we can link into our copy of black beard uh, we can trigger our ship right we don't need this genix control we get an extra draw uh, we do ship shape shipping which isn't too great right now um, but right here as a follow up we have black beard and we have Blackbeard and um, Redbeard. Uh, this can just turn into anything depending on what your opponent is playing. And let's just see what we would have top decked. Um, we would have top decked a Whitebeard, which is excellent. So if our opponent has to use something like an Ash Blossom, uh, we can always just just um, intercept it with our Blackbeard. And um, we could go into something like a Brawn, and we'd get a draw for our Whitebeard. If our opponent like sets something, we can use Brawn to discard it, banish something. Um, if our opponent has some is playing a dark deck, which is the most popular attribute, uh, we can go ahead and tag something out for a copy of your um, Moark, which just acts as another banish. Uh, just the ability to um, just the ability to disrupt so much while generating advantage. Uh, this deck doesn't have the strongest turn one or turn two boards, but turn three, this deck can um, generate a ton of follow up. So let's go into our next replay, uh, not replay, uh, test stand. Right here we've we drawn two copies of Genix Undyne. Um, I won't use our desires right away. First I'll just use Genix Undyne and then we will go ahead and use it for um, to dump our copy of Golden Hair. This is at the, as cost so your opponent cannot ash it. Um, next we can go ahead use desires right now if we want. Um, but we'll just start off with the copy of Shipyard. Maybe to bait out a negate or two. Um, but if our opponent ashes it, it's not too bad, too big of a deal because we have desires. We're going to be searching our copy of White Beard. Next, we can go ahead and use um, the effect of our Golden Hair to get rid of discard our little White Beard right here in order to summon it. And then we can go ahead and use our White Beard to summon a copy of anything really. I'll just search our a um, Blue Beard right here. Um, now, since we have a dark in our graveyard, if I were to equip this to something, we could tag it out into a copy of um, Moark because we have the dark gen controller in our graveyard. So um, I can just quickly do that right here if I like. Um, this will be able to tag it out into a Moark. So we'll put it over there and this will go over there. Uh, we will activate desires right now because why not? Uh, we don't really have anything. so. Our play is going to be kind of blue beard, black beard pass. Um, I, I'll just activate terraforming so that in case we don't top deck anything, we'll at least get the shipyard. And in terms of the cards we just banished, we haven't banished too much. We banished both our copies of salvage and both our copies of foolish burial goods. Uh, we banished copy of golden hair and white beard, uh, but nothing else is too big. We banished one of almost everything else. So um, if we were to just end our turn right here, we have a Banish of Moark, and if we were to draw something, we would have drawn a Pot of Desires, unfortunately. Um, but still, we would have gotten the Search of Moark, and just very, very, very resilient, being being able to um, simply put up so many disruptions um, on top of game, gaining advantage is super good. So um, for a last test hand, we'll just... 
draw an absolutely terrible hand. Two copies of salvage, two copies of booty, one copy of ship shape shipping. Um, absolutely atrocious hand. Um, I hope none of you ever get a hand this trash. No monsters at all. Um, I guess we'll put in one more test hand because why not? Uh, we've run the Jennings controller again. Don't know what is up with me drawing controller. There's very low chance your opponent will um, negate terraforming. So that's the safe play. And um, we're going to activate shipyard. And we're going to activate its effect. Since it discards as cost. Um, we're going to discard the white beer specifically. So if it gets ashed. Um, we do get the summon for something. And then we can normal summon controller. And then Link can do black beard. Um, so now we can trigger our little white beard right here. Which will get the summon for a golden hair. Next, we can special summon the blue beard from our hand, and then we can go link into our copy of Blackbeard. We're gonna go ahead and use the effect of our blue beard right here, discarding the controller. In order to draw one, we drew a copy of Red Beard so we can normal summon it, or we can even just salvage some cards out of our graveyard if we really want to. Um, and we also have um, attribute control because of our booty. Um, since the golden hair really kind of needs to stay in the graveyard, it doesn't really do much out, out of it. So we can just draw some more cards, normal summon our red beard, and we should be pretty good to call it a day. Um, once again, we will be able to tag our black beard into something. Uh, we'll see what, what we top deck. We would have top deck called by grave. Doesn't matter because we do have more plunder patrol cards. Point playing light deck, we can go into lists, and then uh, if our opponent does something, we can go ahead use white beard in order to summon a card from our deck. Um, and if our opponent is playing something, uh, if, if he's playing, if he like ash this or something, we can go into something like a brawn in order to um, tagging out our red beard into brawn for more disruptions while searching more cards as follow up. Uh, this deck is super super good at just getting lots of follow-ups so um i'll just do a quick overview of the deck now uh, so a quick overview the deck is very consistent in what it does um it is able to consistently get your black beard out um, apart from that one test hand where i just opened spells and traps unfortunately uh, we do run a lot of consistency cards like desires shipyard terraforming um Honestly, if I were to do something, I might cut down these three and put in hand traps. Um, although it does kind of seem distant. If you want, you can change these out for Mathematician. You can even put in something like a Danger Mothman instead of Stingray if you like. Just because it will be able to help you draw and discard more cards. Um, it's honestly very... The deck is very open-ended and it's honestly up to your choice. Uh, this is the deck that I play right now. It's been performing pretty good. Um, although it does not have any um, hand traps. Um, still thinking of putting, taking out maybe Foolish Burial Goods. Um, that's probably the one thing I might change about it. But it's a, a very, very solid deck. Um, do give the deck a try and um, I hope you understood it. Just... The deck is based around summoning out your uh, extra deck monsters to make disruptions and getting more follow up off them. Um, the deck is just very powerful, and I hope you it was. I hope you learned something from this video. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as it really does help the channel. And I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.